The motivation that the minister expressed to uh, the executive council for his travel to Mecca uh, was first and primarily to visit the holy city again. Um, secondary uh, or in tandem uh, with that purpose uh, was to deliver a message to those who would listen and heed a warning and a message of reconciliation, uh, a message of uh, unity for the Muslim world to begin to heal the wounds of division, uh, particularly between Shia and Sunni. Thank you so much for receiving us. Every time I have come, it was on some kind of peace mission that we wanted the blessing of Allah by making Umrah. I mean, to try to make peace between Iran and Iraq, between warring Muslim nations and I have to say that that is my purpose to be here today because the war clouds are gathering but this is sacred to me this place our holy city is sacred and the blood of Muslims yes. is sacred. And we must do everything in our power to stop Muslims from shedding the blood of Muslims. And it is time now that we make a serious effort to bring the Ummah together because in our unity, we have the power to make the world bow again to the power of Islam and the example of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. This one, not this to one. leave. This, this one, one, this one. Oh. This is the place where the Prophet told his companions to stay on time. Yeah. He said, do not move until I give you instructions. When they saw that the Muslims had some sense of victory and they saw the spoils of war, they left their posts. And Khalid, before he accepted Islam, he was battling against the Prophet with the pagans. He said when the Muslims descended from their posts, what Khalid did was he surrounded the mountain and then he took the top and then he slaughtered them from behind. 
أصبحت المشركين. Yes, the victory was being given to the Muslims, but when they left their posts, victory was bestowed upon. بسبب مخالفة أمر الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the cause of their defeat is their disobedience to the Prophet. Correct. That will be the end. Those words, obey Allah and His Messenger. Yes, sir. Anything else leads to death and destruction. Yes, sir. Obey Allah and His Messenger. Yes, sir. That goes for all of us, from the king to the peasant. Obedience to Allah is what is required. Otherwise, history will keep on repeating itself in the Ummah. And we will continue to lose in the midst of victory if we rebel. Leaving Medina to Mecca was um, a deep transition. We could not enter Mecca without being in our ihrams, which is the seamless white uh, two-piece garment that covers us. We were a little uneasy about wearing these two pieces of cloth because this is not something we're accustomed to wearing and then having to travel in those garments. So we traveled literally four hours from Medina to Mecca in these garments. So the preparation in itself for ihram began to shift uh, my personal thinking uh, to really the focus of why we were present in Arabia. And the brothers, they were young, young men who uh, were driving and uh, very, very concerned. Highest level of dignitary protection. They didn't want not a car to come next to our principal's vehicle. In fact, the entire detail. Driving top speed all the way, uh, very professionally, but very fast. And once we got to the point where it said, uh, Muslims this way and non-Muslims that way, it was clear that we were about to arrive uh, in the holy precincts. Myself and Brother Ishmael, we were like, this is not the same city. It, it was totally different. So to come back and see it so built up, it's almost unrecognizable with the exception, of course, of Al Haram. And of course, the king has expanded in the investment of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions. We're getting ready to roll into the city where the Savior was born. Mind blown, you know? But when we arrived in Mecca to hear his words, to say, I'm home, uh, in itself was a resonating force that really brought home uh, to me, myself, uh, this idea that we're not only coming to the holy city of Mecca, but we're coming with Muhammad. making Umrah uh, at this particular time, the last 10 days of um, Ramadan. There is a hadith uh, of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that says that if you make the journey of uh, Umrah or a visit to the holy city of Mecca during the month of Ramadan, uh, it is equal in reward to that of a Hajj with Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Umrah was a phenomenal experience to be with the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan. And then knowing that I'm traveling with a man who is a representation of the reason for the Kaaba even being present. He said one of the things he wanted us to, uh, one of the reasons why we were there was so that we can have respect for the symbols, which would give us greater respect for what the symbols represent. 
And there's so much to peel back in our understanding of uh, the Kaaba, the station of Ibrahim, uh, the well of Zamzam, uh, the black stone. Um, so it's a beautiful sight to see even the, the Safa and Marwa where, where Hagar herself um, uh, ran and back and forth seeking sustenance for her child. This is all representative of a struggle and a trouble that Allah blessed her to receive the sustenance that she, she needed, you know, uh, when she was giving up. The struggle of a woman, a black woman and a family uh, to establish their family and establish the um, worship of one God. I could not have imagined anything like this, um, not from a picture or anything like that, to walk through there to see how massive that structure is and the amount of people. When we first approached the Kaaba, it, it almost had a haze around it, like I could not believe that my eyes were beholding the actual Kaaba that we've seen on numerous pictures and uh, you know, videos before, that this was actually it. So the first thing we did was we made our seven tawafs around the Kaaba. And we thank the king for the group of brothers that really, really took good care of us, in particular the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Everywhere we went, they were there. You know, even when we were performing Umrah and we're uh, doing our circuits, they were there with their arms out blocking people from crossing in or coming close to the minister and the delegation. And then just trying to say your prayers and, and the, the recitations that we're supposed to say and you're looking around the, the sounds and you're looking at the people clamoring for the black stone. It was like an overwhelming uh, sensory explosion because it was so much happening that was so new at that particular moment. It was, just, it was fantastic. And then we move forward to the passes between the Safa and the Marwa. I didn't realize how long it was. And when you're walking barefoot on marble, oh, yes, I, it's not that comfortable. And I think that's a part of the, the journey in, in accomplishing a goal you're not going to be comfortable, um, especially when it comes to spiritual goals and things of that nature. And making those seven circuits, and on that last one, when the Supreme Captain Mustafa Farrakhan said, all right, you all follow me. There was a little area where the men are to engage in a slight jog in that area. And as soon as he started jogging, he called the cadence. There were probably 20 to 30,000 people in that area, and practically all of them stopped. They were looking, and they were energized, and they started running with greater spirit and energy. That was so beautiful. I can't wait till we go back with 10,000.